Moving on now, also joining us on the show is Mr. Arup Das Gupta, who is the former Deputy Director ISRO to further understand the Chandrayaan mission. Sir, thank you so much for joining us on the show. Thank you very much for having me. Sir, my first question to you, what can you tell us of the crucial final stages before the Chandrayaan 3 attempts to land on the moon? Well, there are eight stages uh, which are there. Uh, the first stage is where uh, we are, uh, the craft will be breaking. It's called the rough breaking phase. And that's where the speed of the craft is going to come down from 6,000 uh, kilometers per second to about 1,200 kilometers per second. <clears throat> All four uh, thrusters will be used and the height will come down from about 30 kilometers to about 7.4 kilometers. At this point, it will uh, come into the second stage. And at the second stage, uh, two things are going to happen. One is that the Chandrayaan, which was so far flying with its uh, legs horizontal to the moon surface, will now turn around to roughly about 59 degrees uh, and will be, uh, and uh, these uh, further, uh, the speed will come down and it will come down to about 6.8 kilometers. This is called the attitude hold phase, <coughs> where it will, it will steady itself for the landing. Then comes the fine braking phase where the speed and the height will further reduce and uh, now only two of the thrusters will be firing out of the four and uh, it will come down to about uh, 800 meters and it will virtually the speed will come down to zero, the forward speed and it will be li literally hovering over the moon. Uh, at, this, at, at, the, at the fourth stage, uh, it, the, the craft will come down to roughly about 150 meters and uh, then what it will be doing is it will be looking at down uh, through its uh, cameras and aligning itself to the position it should have been based on the uh, data, the, the pictures that have already been fed into the uh, spacecraft. Once it looks and it decides that it's on the right track, then it will slowly come down to 60 meters and then from 60 meters, uh, it will come down to 10 meters and at 10 meters, literally like a feather, is going to come down onto the moon's surface at a speed which will not be more than 3 meters per second. So once it has landed, uh, it will wait for three hours for anything else to happen because the landing process itself will pick up a lot of moon dust and it will have to wait for the moon dust to settle down before it can do anything further. Right, sir. Also shed some light on, on what basis will the Vikram lander select its landing spot? Yeah, uh, actually what has been done is that there is an area which has been earmarked, which is roughly I think about 2 kilometers by about 4 kilometers. So once it reaches, uh, and once it reaches that area, uh, the pictures, the high resolution pictures of that area, which were taken by Chandrayaan 2, uh, which is the uh, carrying one of the highest resolution cameras which has ever gone to the moon. So it will it will take to, it will be looking at those pictures and comparing it in real time with the pictures that uh, it is seeing from its own camera, and that's the way it will decide whether where it is, and then on that basis it will proceed to one of 24 landing sites, and right at that point, just before it lands. Uh, where, when it's at about 150 meters, it will actually look at the details in terms of the boulders, the craters, and if it finds that the area is not suitable for landing, it will take its own decision and move about by about 150 meters. Uh, it has the ability to move about 150 uh, meters uh, 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 um, uh, along track as well as across track nice. to find a zone which is less uh, cluttered with boulders and crat uh, craters and it will then land. Right. Now, so we've also seen that much of what the Chandrayaan-3 does is autonomous. Why is that so? Because, you know, the communications from the Earth takes time. It takes about two seconds. And uh, you, two seconds are too precious, uh, you know, when you're trying to control a craft. So, the craft has to be autonomous. And this is not the first time that uh, we have got an autonomous craft. Mangalyan was also such an autonomous craft. It can take decisions on its own. And that's where the artificial intelligence comes in. All right. Well, so, every millisecond is crucial, of course. So, thank you so much for joining us on the show with your inputs on this.